Greetings, proud sons of Rome. Today I thought to explain why I say this and also explain a bit about European classical heritage. So I'm currently at one of the absolutely most epic places in the world, near Segovia in Spain, San Ildefonso. And as you can see behind me, some really epic statues. I have made videos from here last year as well. I will link that video below so you can check it out. A uh, classic training slash nature video and I might film some more for coming videos just because there's so much epicness here. So basically what we have to understand when talking about being proud sons of Rome etc. It's more the metaphysical legacy of Rome as a pan-European thing rather than actual Rome. So I don't mean literal sons of Rome itself but rather the legacy of it and this of course do not start with Rome but starts with ancient Hellas and just on a personal note here I am biased because I have good feelings about Greece ever since I was small first and foremost because our father read the Iliad to me and my brother when we were small so I got that really early on that sense of epicness from those stories also the Odyssey of course and uh, when I was small I was six years at at the time we went to Crete for a holiday and everyone was extremely nice and I liked it really much so I've always had a personal affinity for Greece as well but yeah that was just a personal little anecdote later on of course I've also respected Greece as the the cradle of Western civilization and it's also something that I'm not unique in talking about being proud sons of Rome or proud sons of Macedon or Zeus and Ares. It's something that basically all European powers carried with them into the early modern era, for example. So if you look upon the uh, castle in Old Town of Stockholm, you have ancient Hellenic aesthetics because it's part of a pan-European thing. So this little clip right here of Hercules... Uh, suckling is from the castle in Stockholm so you will see these type of things in Copenhagen as well so the different European nations and cultures have our own culture of course uh, so the Swedish culture for example but you also have a pan-European culture dating back to Rome and to Greece and of course speaking about the Roman gods they're basically copies of Greek gods just with new names and I also thought to take this opportunity to talk about this because we have had a new release for Legio Gloria rocking this Perseus shirt now. Which is obviously to encourage you to renounce the energy and to stay strong. The other release is the Sword of Mars which is a um, nod to the Western Roman Empire. It's called Sword of Mars, Sword of Attila. And this is to remind ourselves that currently, in Western Europe at least, we are at where the Western Roman Empire was in their decaying years, so to speak. But it's a motivating thing at least, and it's something that I want to point to Greece and Rome as the spiritual origins of Western civilization. Extremely smooth edit into the video here. Another note on Achilles, as I mentioned in a recent video. Also, I have styled myself to a certain extent upon Achilles. So if you look at my hair, obviously when I was 14 or 13, saw Troy and thought Brad Pitt had a really aesthetic physique and also hair. So that is one reason. And then also, in regards to the theme of this video, it's important to point out that if I use Greek aesthetics or Roman terminology and or anything like that, it doesn't mean that I renounce the Viking side of Swedish history, for example. I am the first one to be patriotic for my own, so uh, it's not about that at all. It's about a pan-European legacy, and after all, my holy work here in the materium it's about western civilization european bioculture um, european civilization so it's a pan-european movement that i am promoting it's not specifically scandinavian so that is 
an additional motivating factor for me to use these sort of um, yeah this type of aesthetics, uh, this type of terminology, saying proud sons of Macedon, obviously in respect to Alexander the Great, and also another note which I forgot to mention in the previous uh, place we recorded in is that the Holy Roman Empire or Germany saw itself as a spiritual descended from the Roman Empire. So you have that as a recurring theme in in Europe. So yeah, and uh, this is the t-shirt I was mentioning about the Sword of Mars. And I thought to take these pictures here since we have Ares behind us or Mars in Roman. And then a last note upon this uh, whole Roman or Greek legacy in the rest of Europe. My name Marcus is of course of Roman origins. So yeah, back to the other spot. Boom. So anyway, I hope that was a good explanation of why you see in Spain here a lot of Greek aesthetics uh, or why you see Greek aesthetics in Copenhagen or Stockholm. It's because it's the same lineage that continues on with classical Europe. And also if we're talking about Christianity and paganism, it's not either or. It's first paganism, then Christianity took over, but you see here, again, still the same sort of aesthetics. So neoclassical aesthetics, or whatever you want to call it, it's absolutely motivating and glorious at least. So anyway, thank you for watching. XOXO, boom.